Hello people from the future, welcome from Eli's Nerd. So in this video, I'm gonna be doing something different. Well, I usually make videos about machine learning and data science, but as a computer science student, I really want to describe one topic in computer science that is very interesting in my opinion, and that is different complexities of problems. And I'm pretty sure that you have heard of this term P versus NP problems. Well, I am going to describe that. And I also going to describe other classes of problems like NP complete and NP hard. I know that there are a lot of videos that cover this topic, but either they are too lengthy and mathy or they are too short and misses out on a lot of mathematical details. So I will be trying to maintain a balance between math and intuition and let's see how it goes. Well, uh, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon if you haven't done already. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you need to know before jumping into the concept of NP and P and this kind of stuff is what is a decision problem? A decision problem is a problem where the solution to that problem can either be yes or can be no. Now why is the case? Well we are studying computer science and computers only understand binaries that's why we need to convert the solution into some binary representation and that's why we define no as 0 and yes as 1 okay these are pretty much the basic stuffs now the first kind of problem I'm gonna define is NP problems well I know that some of you are screaming at your screens right now that why am I defining NP problem first rather than the P well you will learn why I'm doing so so NP is acronym for non-deterministic polynomial type problems well there are actually two definitions I'm gonna explain the both but first let's start with the easier one so uh, in the first definition it says that if we can verify a solution of a problem in polynomial time then the problem belongs to NP class now what the hell that even means well let me explain this with an example well, I'm gonna take the famous example of boolean satisfiability problem. So the problem goes something like this. I have a boolean expression of three variables, right? And the expression should be in conjunctive normal form. Well, you may also know it as product of sums. So the expression will look like something like this. x1 and there will be or operation with these variables well we can obviously take the complement of this variable and when we close the bracket we should add we should add the next term using only and okay so again I'm just choosing it randomly so x2 and let's say here again x3 bar and at last I'm also adding this thing okay and these terms the terms in the brackets are called clauses and these terms are called literals okay so you can see that we can have either the literal itself or the complement of this literal so this is actually a conjunctive normal form of boolean expression and the problem goes something like this we need to say whether there exists a combination of x1 x2 and x3 such that this whole expression becomes 1. So, how many possibilities are actually there? Well, if we just write this possibility something like this, we can see that it will start from 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and it will go until 1, 1, 1. And remember, each of these assignments for the three literals is known as certificate okay so what we are gonna do we are gonna check the certificate whether or not it is a valid solution of this problem and if we just put these numbers here let me just do it for you so zero zero here here also zero because you can see one so complement of one will be zero and if we are all of them it will become zero obviously and here we have one because this is zero and it will be 0 and here will, it will be 0 so the R of these three will be 1 here it was 0 and here uh, 0 1 and 0 and 
here it is 1 now if we just and 0 1 and 1 we will get 0 so it is not a valid solution and you can see that the checking can be done in polynomial time right so that's why this problem is actually belongs to the class NP now comes the second definition for NP class problems well this is actually the definition from which we have derived the name of this class okay so the definition goes something like this if we can write a non-deterministic algorithm for a problem that can solve the problem in polynomial time then we say the problem belongs to the NP class so what the hell is a non-deterministic algorithm well every algorithm that we can write in reality is deterministic an algorithm is a series of stages where each stage has some logic which defines the output for that particular stage so suppose I have one stage here and it has obviously some input and it has three possible outputs okay and in our deterministic algorithm there is some logic here by following that logic we can determine the output for this stage but in case of a non-deterministic algorithm the scenario changes dramatically well it says that we have the input here and the stage is here and suppose it has also three possible outcomes but we don't pass any logic here yes the algorithm magically finds the correct output that is suitable for its current input and proceeds further so without any logic this algorithm finds the correct solution so that's why it is magical and this is not deterministic if we can write this kind of algorithm for our problem which solves the problem in polynomial time then we say the problem belongs to the class NP now I know that at first it is a little bit harder to wrap your head around this concept of non-deterministic algorithm so let me give you an example suppose we are in a magical land and we have infinite number of processors and we want to design something like this so how we can do it suppose this is the input stage of our algorithm and it has three possible outcomes and each of them will have these many possible outcomes and each of them will have some number of possible outcomes and it will go suppose for n levels okay so after the n levels we are gonna have a large number of nodes okay so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna place one processor at each of the nodes so when we input at this stage all these three processors will get activated and it will calculate and all of them will calculate the solution parallelly so uh, you can see that the correct solution will be obtained only after one unit of time okay so similarly when we'll get here all of these nodes will be getting calculated simultaneously so after only two unit of time we will have the solution for each stage now going forward by this concept after in stages we will have the solution for all these nodes in only order of n time because we have processed the we have processed the nodes parallelly not sequentially that's how non-deterministic algorithm can be implemented in a magical world with infinite number of processors you can see that the number of nodes is exponential but the processing is happening simultaneously that's why we can get the correct solution from all these nodes in just order of n time that is in polynomial time now let's get back to the real world and suppose we don't have that many processors but we are gonna check all the paths by using only one processor to do that we have to go through each path sequentially so suppose this path this path this path this path may lead to this path and after calculating this only we can check for other possibilities and doing that will definitely gonna cost us exponential time so I hope the concept of non-deterministic algorithm is pretty clear now and if we can write a polynomial solution by using non-deterministic algorithm for any problem then the problem belongs to the class NP now I'm gonna come to the class P so 
P problems are those problems which can be solved by using deterministic algorithm in polynomial time. So let me give you an example. Suppose you are given an array of n numbers. Okay, so the numbers are something like this, and somebody gives you a new number k, and the problem goes something like this. You have to tell whether k is present in that array or not. So you can see that it is a decision problem because the answer can be either yes or no. So how can we solve it using a deterministic algorithm? Well, it's very simple. We just have to traverse the array and check each number whether or not it is equal to k. So whenever we find a number that is equal to k, we say that okay, the array contains the k. So that is the answer is yes. Or even after traversing the whole array, we don't find k, then we say the array doesn't contain k. So the solution is no. Well, can we write a non-deterministic algorithm for this problem? Well, obviously we can. It's like checking all the array positions by using n number of processors at once. So by doing that in just O of one time, we can find the solution of this problem. So by the second definition of NP class problems, this array such problems also belongs to the class NP. That's why we say that P is a subset of NP. Well, whether or not it is a proper subset that is debatable and actually the origin of P versus NP. Let me draw the sets for you. So this is the set of all problems that we can define as NP. And this is the set of all problems that we define as P. And obviously, this array such problem belongs to here and you can see that this array such problems lies on P and also in NP. Now let us go back to the boolean satisfiability problem. Actually I should mention here that the number of clauses can be as many as you want. Okay. Now just look at the number of possible certificates for this problem. You can see that here are 2 to the power 3 possible certificates, right? And if we're gonna check all of them one by one by our deterministic algorithm, it will take us exponential time, well, 2 to the power n to be precise. According to our current understandings, there are no deterministic algorithm which can solve this problem in polynomial time. So we cannot write this problem here we have to write this problem somewhere here okay so it belongs to NP but currently it doesn't belongs to P now whether or not P is equal to NP we don't know so far so we cannot say for sure that this problem cannot be solved in polynomial time ever but most of the researchers think that P is not equal to NP so probably there is no algorithm to solve this problem in polynomial time okay so now i'm going to define a different class of problem that is called np complete problems so the definition of np complete problem goes something like this we say a problem belongs to np complete if it follows two condition the first condition is the problem must belong to NP. So how are we gonna check the first condition? If we can verify the certificates of that problem, if they are the correct solution for this problem in polynomial time, then we say the problem belongs to the NP. So this part is really simple. We just need to have some dummy solutions and we just need to check whether the solutions are correct or not. And if you can do this in polynomial time, then the problem belongs to NP. The second condition is every problem in NP should be reducible to this particular problem. So uh, any problem in NP should be reducible to this particular problem. So if these two conditions are met, then we say 
that problem belongs to the NPC that is NP complete class now researchers have done a lot of effort to prove that this boolean satisfiability problem actually is an NP complete problem now uh, as they have proved that already so whenever we want to prove some new problem belongs to the NP complete class what we do we just prove that whether or not this problem can be reduced to our new problem so let me just write it for you it will be better suppose uh, that boolean satisfiability problem I'm referring as L1 okay and our new problem say uh, P1 okay so if we can reduce this boolean satisfiability problem that is the three satisfiability problem well three satisfiability problem because if we consider only three literals then we say it is three satisfiability so if we have k literals then we say k satisfiability okay so if this three satisfiability problem can be reduced to this new problem then we say our new problem also belongs to the class np complete okay now one thing you need to know this reduction should be done in polynomial time okay well what does it actually means to reduce one problem to other well it simply means that one instance of that problem can be equivalently right as another instance of this problem suppose uh, in our boolean satisfiability that is our three set problem one instance can be written as uh, x1 x2 and x3 okay because we have three literals and we have to assign values to this three and suppose somehow we can convert this problem okay uh, somehow we can now let's come back to this problem so if there is a way such that one instance of this problem i am referring it as a1 a2 a3 and let me just squeeze it down to suppose alpha and let me just squeeze it down to beta if we can show somehow that beta is actually equivalent to alpha then we say that our previous problem l1 can be reduced to p1 so by showing this reduction we can prove whether or not a problem belongs to the class NPC. So what does this NP complete set lies in our Venn diagram? Well, let me just go up. Well, this should actually lie here, right? Why? Because obviously NPC belongs to NP. And also it cannot lie here because uh, we are assuming that for now P is not equal to NP and here I have put the condition every problem in NP should be reduced to this problem so our NPC class should lie somewhere here okay now there is another kind of problem which is known as NP hard problem well the definition of NP hard and NP complete are really the same but with an one single catch in np hard problem we only consider this second point if we can show that every problem in np can be reduced to our new problem then we say np hard okay we don't even need to check the first condition so we don't care whether or not our problem belongs to the class np if it follows this condition then it belongs to np hard so here is another interesting thing you can notice that every NP complete problem also belongs to NP hard problem isn't it because in NP complete we are checking two condition but in NP hard we are checking only one condition so obviously NPC is a subset and NP hard is a superset well again I am saying that it is based on our current understanding so uh, to represent this in Venn diagram what we need to do we need to first delete this side okay so uh, this is our NPC and this is our NP hard set okay and see NPC is actually the intersection of NP 
and NP hard. It may happen that there are problems in NP hard that can be reduced to NP complete, but we couldn't find a way so far. So in future, what is in NP hard can actually come in NP complete. All right. So let us take an example where the problem belongs to NP hard, but it doesn't belong to NP. Okay. So a beautiful example should be the traveling salesman problem. So let me simplify it for you. So we have uh, n number of nodes, okay, and they are all connected, okay, with obviously uh, different weighted edges. Well, I'm not drawing all the connections. You get the idea, right? So the weights will be there, and uh, suppose this is the source vertex, and the problem says. We should find one close path starting from this node and ending at this node such that this path visits all the nodes and the sum of the weights of the edges that is traversed should be minimized. So obviously this is an optimization problem and this is actually an NP hard problem. Now, why is the case? Remember that this is an optimization problem. So it means that we have to find the minimum of all the possible solutions. We don't actually have to say if the solution is correct. We have to say if the solution is minimum. So that is actually cannot be done in polynomial time. Suppose somebody gives you one certificate. Okay, let me just denote it as C1. So we have uh, one certificate and we have to check whether or not this is the minimum. So how can we do it to check if this is a minimum? We actually have to check all of the certificates. So that will be exponential time Algorithm, okay, so even the checking is not in polynomial time So that's why it belongs to NP hard, but doesn't belong to NP so uh, let me just uh, show you the Venn diagram again. So can there be any problem lying here? Well, if we consider that P is not equal to NP, so there must be some problem that lie here, right? That we cannot classify as NP complete or P or NP hard. Well, researchers suspect that isomorphism problem is a kind of problem that may lie here. So what is the problem? Well, the problem goes like that. You have two graphs, okay? And uh, this is the G1. And this is G2 and you have to say whether or not these two graphs are isomorphic. So researchers suspect that this is a kind of problem that doesn't belong to P, doesn't belong to NP complete, doesn't belong to NP hard, but belongs to NP. So it should lie somewhere here. So this is not proved yet, but uh, researchers suspect that this is the case. So let me give you a quick recap of this Venn diagram and what are the possibilities out there. So let me just draw it very clearly for you for the last time. So this is the set of all problems that we classify as NP. This is the set of problems that we can solve in polynomial time using a deterministic algorithm and uh, there is this set of problems which we say NP hard so the problems for which uh, every problem in NP can be reduced to that problem but doesn't necessarily belong to NP so these are NP hard problems that is every problem that is at least as hard as the hardest problem in NP and then we have this set that is NP complete set all the problems that are as hard as all the other NP problems so these are the main four sets that we define in computational complexity and this picture is drawn by assuming that NP is not equal to P but what if we want to draw a picture where P 
P is actually equal to NP well then the picture will look something like this these are all the problems that belongs to the NP hard class and then there are this problems which are NP and P and NP complete so uh, if we can show that P is equal to NP then this portion will actually vanish yes the NP complete problem will also be same as P and NP so then the picture will look something like this so I hope the concept of the computation complexities are really clear to you right now I hope that you enjoyed this video Please share this video, like this video and comment below for future suggestions and subscribe to Normalize Nerd. Thanks for watching.